the playbook here on the campus of Fordham University with head football coach Andrew Briner. Coach, appreciate you taking time. Absolutely. Thanks, Emery. Happy to uh, spend some time with you. Well, you just finished your first season here at Fordham, one of the youngest head coaches in college football in Division One. Now, what did you learn? What did you expect? What you didn't expect? How was this experience as a whole? Well, I think, you know, the, the old adage that you learn something new every day um, certainly holds true in your first year as a, as a head football coach. Um, you know, every day was, was truly a learning experience. I've obviously had, uh, you know, great mentors to, to look up to and learn from. Mark Matlack at Allegheny, Randy Edsel at, at UConn, and then seeing Joe Moorhead do it here um, certainly, you know, laid the foundation for me. And fortunate that so many things uh, were already in place. Um, so th those were the, the advantages. Those were the things that, that made the transition as, as easy as possible. But there's there was no there was no head coach's manual under this <laughs> desk. Um, you know, you have those situations that, that pop up and and you know, you, you, you have to deal with them. And it's a lot different uh, when you're sitting on the sides of the staff table saying, oh, I would do this if I was the head coach, uh, then suddenly when you're sitting at the head of it. But, you know, managing managing a, a large organization. Uh, when you're talking Division One football, you're talking about 90 football players, 10 staff members, support staff members. So I think the, the biggest surprise may have been just truly how much time you spend managing people. Now you see a lot of young coaches that quickly want to jump in. They coach one season, let's say, of high school ball, and they're ready to be head coach at Purdue, right? But what advice would you give the young coach that's looking to get to where you are today? Take the time wherever you're at. You know, this was the advice that my high school football coach and really my, my first mentor, uh, Gump May, gave me. He said, Whenever, when you get a job and you get into the profession, keep a notebook and, and keep a notebook of the things that you see coaches do that you really like and, and keep a, a list of the things that, that you don't like. Um, so that as, as you move up and your role expands and you get into a leadership role, you know, at first as a coordinator and, and now as a head coach, you kind of have those notes to look back on, on, on how you, you know, take all your experiences, mold them together and be the best coach that, that you can be. So my advice to, to people getting into it is just to take the time and, and, and learn and, and don't rush it because it's one of those things that you can say you're ready for, um, but I, I, if I'm speaking honestly, I don't know if anybody's truly ready for it. Um, you know, I, I'm fortunate to, to be in the position and I'm learning and, and grinding and, and trying to get better every day just like we ask the players to do. You're an inspiration to a lot of coaches, or a lot of people just in general, because we know how, as a former football player, it takes you like two to three trips around corporate America before you realize, you know what, I kind of really love football, I want to be back in it. At what point during your playing career did you realize, you know what, this is exactly what I want to do? Sure. I, when I graduated high school, I knew that I wanted to, to teach and to coach. And I went off to Lock Haven University, uh, was a health and physical education major, and, and thought I would you know, graduate, get a, a high school teaching job, and coach baseball and football. Um, it was my sophomore year at Lock Haven that my position coach, John Allen, who's now the, uh, one of the offensive coaches down at Delaware State, said to me you know, one day, Andrew, have you ever thought about coaching? And I said, well, yeah, I'm going to do high school um, you know, baseball, football. I said, what about college coaching football? I think you'd be, you'd be good at it. And, and he put that idea in my mind, um, and I really went back to my high school football coach uh, with it, and, and it just became my, my mission. And it, it's all I wanted to do. Um, took any opportunity I could to, to coach. Uh, helped out seven on seven in the summers back in Hershey, PA. Coach Little League Baseball, um, you know, coach speed camps, whatever I could do to coach, I, I did it because I, I knew from, you know, trying to get a coaching job right out of college, everyone's going to say the same thing, experience, experience, experience. Um, so I was trying to build as, as robust of a resume as I could without having any, any real experience. So I, I credit my high school coach, I credit Coach Allen uh, for putting the idea in my head, but I, I, I got it in my mind that that's what I was going to do and, and, and went at it you know, full speed uh, with, with everything I had and, and really just fortunate that, that I was given an opportunity right out of college at Allegheny uh, to, to get my feet wet. Now, you were injured in college. That really cut you sh short your playing career. Mine did too. Uh, it was a knee injury. And one of the tougher transitions is to go from playing on Monday to not playing on Tuesday. And it's weird. And it takes a lot of guys a, a long time to, to deal with that. How were you able to deal with that sudden change pretty quickly and really jump right into it? Yeah, 
it, it is tough, and, and I talk to our current players all the time when, when they get injured, and we've had some guys that have had career-ending injuries, and it takes a, a while to adjust because suddenly something you identify yourself with for so much of your life, it's gone. Um, you know, I think I had an easier time because I knew what I wanted to do. And, and when, you know, we sat down with the medical people and, and sat down with the coaching staff and, you know, was really advised that, that continuing to play would, would not be in my best interest, um, the coaches just looked at me and said, okay, your coaching career starts today. Um, so I, I, I had something that I, I knew I was passionate about, something I knew I wanted to do right there ready for me. So it was about midway through my senior year um, and, and really just went from on the field to up in the booth trying to look at coverages, thinking I knew what I was talking about. Um, looking back on it now, probably gave Coach Klasik some bad information. On the field, Coach, there was one game in particular that I, it came to, I, I had an epiphany. It was like, you know what, this guy's going to be a great coach because they say your team is a direct reflection of the person I look at head coach. And I was at the Monmouth game. And it was back and forth, high score in the fair. You guys were down. And I didn't see you flip out. You know, normally coaches flip out over the littlest things. And you maintain your calm, your cool. Team responded, fought through adversity, and pushed the game into overtime. And right then and there, I said, this, this guy is mentally tough. His team is mentally tough, and they're focused. How much of that you can attribute to when you're playing, and how important is that to instill into your team now as a coach? Yeah, well, thank you very much. That's quite quite a compliment. Um, you know, I, I think mental toughness is, is a huge part of it. Um, you know, I, I was not the most physically gifted athlete. Um, I think one of my strengths was, was mental toughness. I think it, it was always knowing what I wanted to accomplish and, and being focused on that goal. And, and that that got me through, you know, those, those tough times, the times that, that you have to battle adversity. And I think that's another thing that going back to kind of your first question that, that I learned in my first year as a head coach is, is coaching these guys through adversity. Um, it, I think in, in our society um, with this age group, I think a lot of times, you know, adversity hits and they, they transfer schools or they, they go to a different, you know, AAU team in basketball and, and people don't, they, you know, these young people need to learn that, that not everything's going to go their way all the time and, and, and that you, you remain focused, you fall back on your, your fundamentals and, and, and the core beliefs you have as a, as a person and as a program and, and you just keep you just keep battling. I, I, I don't know any other way to say it other than that. Um, you know, credit, you know, those coaches that, that I learned from, um, you know, especially Coach Morad, I think, in, in that regard of just, you know, staying calm and, and poised on the sideline. And, and I think on game day, you know, if you've prepared your, your team the right way, if you've prepared yourself uh, the, the right way, then, then in a lot of ways the, the work's done and it's time to just sit there and, and focus and be calculated and make the right decisions and, um, you know, losing Losing your mind over a penalty has never gotten a, a flag picked up, so you will not see me do that. Now, how much by you being a younger coach, a lot of guys can't relate. So how much do you find yourself drawing back to your playing experience to really drive the point home to these guys and they're able to buy into it more? So let's say if you were a 65-year-old coach, they probably like, well, he played at a different time. You know? Yeah, no, I, I think that's true. Um, I, I think that the, the players look at me and say, there's a guy, you know, he may be about 15 years older than I am. Um, I, I certainly go back to the things that I, I learned in my experiences as a player. Um, but, you know, the, the, the world constantly changes. And I, I think whether you're 32 or you're 65, if you have a genuine uh, care for your football players and they know that, you can connect uh, with them. I think that that's more important than, than the age. You walk outside, you see the seven blocks of granite, you know, great history here at Fordham, and we know that you can't build anything without a strong foundation, and to you, that's your coaching philosophy. So what's one piece of your philosophy that you live by that helped you be successful uh, early on in your career, last year as a head coach, and what you plan to do moving forward? Yeah, we have a, a, a concept that we rolled out when I became the head coach, uh, kind of a, a slogan is speed, uh, which is superior preparation, effort, and execution will result in dominance. Um, and I'm a big believer that, that preparation, effort, and execution are what determines uh, success. I'm a big believer in preparation, uh, you know, the, the physical work that, that you have to put in, the mental work that you have to put in. Uh, if you don't prepare uh, the, the right way, you don't have a, a chance to, to, to be successful. You know, 
Football games cannot be won Sunday through Friday, but they can certainly be lost. Um, so we make sure that we prepare uh, each and each and every day. Um, and once, you, if you've prepared the right way, then you get to Saturday, and it's about effort and execution. Um, you know, mental or physical effort is easy to, to measure, and I think everybody knows what that is. But to me, there, there's a, a mental effort, uh, an ability to stay focused, um, and, and and an emotional effort. Um, kind of going back to what we talked about, the highs and lows of a game, um, to, to to be energized, um, but to also be calm enough to, to battle through the adversity and then ultimately you know uh, football much like life is a bottom line endeavor um, and, and you got to execute um, and, and ultimately if you've prepared and you give effort and it's going to come down to which which football team executes so we talk about that that speed um, and speed wins football games so preparation effort execution those are the the core philosophies that that I I you know live by and, and teach our, our football players what is it you love about the game I, I love the competitive aspect of the game. I, I'm one of those kids. I, I flipped the, the the candy candy lane uh, board game over when I was a, a kid. If I if I if I lost, I, I'm just I've been a competitive person my whole life. I, I like you know you know as a player I liked you know competing against other people and winning those those one on one matchups. And as a coach, I look at it each and every week. Of it. I, I I'm competing against the other head coach to prepare his team. Uh, the right way and, and put them in a position to, to go out and execute at a higher level. So for me, I just, I, I love the competition. And, and football in itself um, is a game that to me, you know, shaped my my life and, and my beliefs. Um, you know, I, I do think it's the ultimate team game, as, as cliche as that, that sounds, but you know, the, the life lessons that, that football instilled in me and, and, and led me to where I am today, um, you know, to, to help and be a part of instilling those life lessons through the game of football on the young men that I get to work with and hopefully making them better husbands, fathers, uh, employees um, in the future. I, that, that's the, that's the, you know, the best part of this job and, and one of the great things about football. Coach, we're here in the Bronx, one of the five boroughs, New York City. Fordham football has been here forever and it's been a staple. You know, it's a historic program, a lot of great history and tradition here and you've had a lot of success. And I've noticed when the success happens here, you know, everyone gets involved, stadium is packed, it's rocky, you can barely get to the stadium, you know, and how important is the success uh, for them? What does that mean for the Bronx, but also the landscape of college football here in New York City? It's not necessarily known as a college football town, but you do have three Division One programs within three boroughs, and you used to have St. John's, you got Stony Brook out on Long Island, you used to have Hospital and stuff like that, but how important uh, is it to the Bronx, and what role can you guys play in making college football New York City as opposed to everywhere else? Sure. Um, you know, I, I think because of Fordham's uh, values as a Jesuit institution, um, you know, one of those, those you know, core values of, of the Jesuits is to be men and women for others. Um, and, and Fordham University, our football team, does a lot of community outreach in the Bronx. Um, so I think that, that when we have success on the field, uh, there's a lot of people in the, in the Bronx that are really happy for, for any of Fordham's successes because of how much Fordham students go out into our, our local area and, and help people who aren't as, as fortunate as we are. So I think there's a pride in the Bronx. You know, you're in North Jersey, so you've probably gotten a feel for it. each borough has its own its own pride. And, and overall, we're all proud to, to represent New York City. I think one of the neat things about, you know, a, a, a program like Fordham having the success that we've had over the last few years and doing it with some homegrown talent has really brought to light the quality of high school football that's that's being played in in the city um, you know we we do a, a seven on seven tournament in the summer that's probably about half filled with, with city schools we do a city camp uh, for, for the the kids in the five boroughs uh, during the summertime got to interact with these New York City coaches quite a bit over the last five years there's some really good football here in the city and I think it's great Growing and it's getting better. So you know, I think anytime you know you have success and you have local guys on your roster, it highlights the the, the high school football that's being played in the local area. I mean, it's a big time program, and when you look at what Fordham has done since coming back into major college football, it has had an, a positive impact because one of my good friends that lived right behind my house growing up played at Fordham, Chris Rhodes, and. I didn't know anything about Fordham until he said he was going to Fordham and then he came back and was telling me about, about the history and it's huge and now everywhere you go you kind of I'm starting to see a little bit more Fordham apparel 
here and there. And do you think winning is the the, uh, the, the elixir for, for everything? Yeah, I, I think anytime you, you have success, people want to be proud of or want to be associated with successful organizations. The great thing about doing that in New York City is the type of coverage you're going to get. You know, our local newspaper is the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. So when we win a football game or, or we're having a great season and one of those two newspapers writes a, a story about Fordham, that's being read on the West Coast, that's being read in Europe, that's being read in Asia. So I, the, the brand expansion that can occur when a New York City football team is, is having success is, is, you know, unlike any other place in, in the world. Coach, we remember a time when we probably saw maybe four or five teams on television you had the West Coast game, probably with BYU or San Diego State or something sure. like that. But now everybody's on TV. The country is smaller. Uh, students have a ton of options. So why would a student athlete choose for them? Yeah, I think you know the, the, the quick answer to that is that it's a great uh, balance of Division One scholarship football um, at a very high academic institution. You know, I, I'm very proud of the student athletes that, that we recruit. I think they have a level of maturity about them. Um, they're, they're quality football players, many having the, the aspiration of, of playing in the NFL. But the NFL is not their only dream, and, and they see the value um, of the education at Fordham and really take their athletic talents and leverage that to get a, a world-class education and, and you know come here and, and continue hopefully to, to win football games and, and be successful and then go on and be successful um, you know after their, their football careers are over whether that be after four years with us or or some get the opportunity to go to the next level but either way Fordham University um, both from an education and a culture standpoint is going to prepare you for success beyond uh, the football field. Well coach I was excited to see you get out there in your first year do great things uh, undefeated at home last year and I'm excited to see you do similar things this year. I know you guys have a really good schedule and I'm excited to get this thing kicked off. Appreciate you taking Absolutely. time. Absolutely thank you so much. No problem.